One of the most industrious workers at the New York Post is sports columnist Leonard Coppett. And today, Leonard Coppett has what is perhaps the biggest story of the day, the weather, and he has one of the most important girls in the television industry as far as weather is concerned to talk with, Janet Tyler. Leonard? Uh, Janet, in my business, sports, that is, weather is a constant factor in our minds. It's always a question of whether you're going to get rained out or whether you're going to get out of town or into town by air on account of the weather. But I imagine to you it's even more important than that. Well, uh, yeah, Leonard and I have been sort of putting our heads together, and I find out he really worries about the weather. I sort of, uh, if things don't go right with the weather, I just say it's his fault, that guy at the Weather Bureau, Mr. Christie. But I do want to say to all you gals today, here in New York and everywhere, uh, don't feel too bad, because this is a terrible, terribly bad storm. I, this is my beat weather, and I called the Weather Bureau this morning, and I said, what is this? And they said it's a big low in Illinois, so the women in Chicago, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Cleveland, Washington, D.C., way down to the Carolinas, are all having the same trouble that we are here. Um, but Leonard and I put our heads together on this subject, and uh, we have weather stories, little oddities. And one thing I've discovered over the years is that certain people think that there should be a weather forecaster in the dugouts at baseball games because of the fact that uh, a pitcher, his ball is... Uh, dependent on the wind and the humidity and all kinds of things like that. And Leonard had an interesting answer. I well, think. that's it's true that all these things are factors. The only reason I don't think a lot of weather forecasters are going to get jobs out of it is that baseball players know this from the time they're about four years old and they start playing ball. Instead of looking at a lot of barometers and other scientific instruments, Yogi just goes out to the mound and says, don't throw the curve no more. Yeah. Because <laughs> it isn't working today. You know, um, this business of fashion, and, and he has a story about what people wear to do the weather. So we, you know, we really did this bit very well. I was kind of fascinated to find out what the gals used to do about at the turn of the century, you know, to give you an old-fashioned Easter story. So I went to the Herald Tribune, and I found that in the year 1901, there was practically nothing on the pages of the Herald Tribune regarding Easter parades and hats and things like that, which I thought was rather odd but interesting, but there was one thing. James McCutcheon Company had an ad for la, a nine, uh, linen mesh underwear to be worn in the spring to keep you warm against the alternating cold and warm air. And that's about all they did about wearing clothes in those days, apparently. If they did, they didn't talk about it or write about it much. Well, but, uh, Leonard, you have a comment. Well, in athletics, uh, fashion extends mostly to shoes <coughs> as far as weather is concerned. And it's a traditional story in many a football game. Uh, the most famous one in 1934 between the Giants and the Chicago Bears in which the team came out on the muddy field for the second half wearing sneakers instead of cleats and roared on to victory because the other team was falling down in the mud. You know, since you're so terribly concerned about the weather, and he told me that he really worries about it sometimes, especially if there's a New York team involved, um, what do you think of the weather as? Uh, do you think of it as a, as a personal thing like... A woman, for example, for instance, Mr. Frank Capra in his latest uh, film on television calls the weather the unchained goddess and calls her meteor. Do you think of it as an unchained no, goddess? No, I don't think of it as a goddess or a god or just a condition of life. <laughs> <laughs> well, And I something to talk about. <laughs> it sure is something to talk about. Thank you very much, Leonard, and it's been a pleasure being here. Well, with all the construction going on here in New York...